One of the questions I get asked most is what's the best lens or focal length for street photography? Which is a good question because over years of taking photographs on the street, I've come to realize that what lens you choose can have the biggest impact on your photography and your style. So in this video, I'm gonna discuss which lens is best to help you improve your street photography and decide what focal length works for you. So the first thing to mention is deciding over a zoom or a prime lens. Most street photographers you meet will probably swear by a prime or fixed focal length lens, but plenty use a zoom lens as well. There are pros and cons to both. A zoom lens will give you versatility and will accommodate capturing a variety of scenes and styles, but that can add more decision making to your process. And conversely, a prime lens can be restrictive as you can only zoom by using your feet, but constrictions can often be great for creativity. If you're a beginner, then personally I recommend a kit zoom lens. You can get great shots with a kit lens. In fact, I traveled through Japan and Korea just using the Fujifilm 18 to 55 millimeter kit lens, and one of the photos from that trip was a finalist in a street photography competition. So bear that in mind if you constantly hear you have to use a prime lens when you're out on the street to make good photos. You don't. If you've got a zoom lens but you're thinking about getting a prime lens, you can look through your back catalogue of old photographs taken on your zoom lens and see if you tend to shoot around a similar focal length. That will then help you decide what focal length you use most to then pick up a prime lens. I did that and found out that I was taking most of my photos around the 50mm mark, so that's why I first picked up a 50mm lens. Most street photographers I know use prime lenses. Prime lenses are fast, meaning they have a larger aperture to bring in more light, which is helpful for low light photography at night. They're smaller, which is much less noticeable on the street, and also you tend to get used to seeing in one focal length, which means that you can capture a moment really fast, and that's so valuable when things happen in a split second on the street. I should mention that when I'm referring to focal lengths in the rest of this video, I'm referring to the full frame equivalent. For example, on my Fujifilm crop sensor cameras, when I say 50mm, I'm referring to the Fujifilm 35mm lens, because the equivalent view of the 35mm lens on a crop sensor camera is actually 50mm. Right, so let's get into it, the best focal lengths for street photography. Let's start with the Nifty 50. This lens is one of the best lenses for beginners and experienced street photographers because it's not too close in, but also not too far away. It doesn't require you to get too close physically to your subjects either, so it can definitely help with confidence when you're first starting out. This focal length has some compression. Compression meaning on longer focal lengths, the foreground and background appear closer together than in real life. The longer the lens, the more apparent this becomes. So with that little bit of compression in a 50 millimeter lens, it can be great for more abstract street photography or when wanting to include some of the environment to conceal parts of an image or to use for creative framing. It can also be great for candid portraits too. When I went to Morocco last year, I only took my 50 mil lens and that's it. I knew people didn't really like being photographed there, so I wanted to make a project focusing more on the colorful environments of Morocco anchored by the people that live there. I hadn't used a 35 millimeter lens much before this trip and I knew a longer lens wouldn't work to capture those sort of winding alleys. So I went with the 50. If I went back to Morocco, I'd definitely be using my 35.2 now that I've got some experience with it, but just having the 150mm lens for that trip meant I was restricted and had to be creative, which was so much fun. At times frustrating, but then also it resulted in a coherent body of work and a project I'm really happy with. So the 50mm lens is a really good all-rounder lens, especially if you're just starting out or want to have more clean, less cluttered photographs, taking advantage of that compression. But after my trip to Morocco, I've become increasingly interested in getting closer and making more subject-driven street photographs. And you can see the start of my journey using the 35mm focal length in this video up here somewhere. So next, let's talk about what's now my favorite focal length, 35mm. The 35mm lens, I would say, is probably the gold standard for street photography. It's not too wide, not too narrow, a great all-rounder choice for capturing street scenes. It's not so wide that you have to get super close to subjects, but also not too narrow that you can still include more elements in your frame. I found it a real challenge when I first picked up a 35mm lens, but after a while of using it consistently, I learned to see in that focal length, and now I just love it and it lives on my camera. My work really started to change when I switched to 35mm, and that is the power that using different focal lengths has. It may or may not be the same for you, but the way I see things, I visualize scenes in the focal length that I've been using for a while. I bang on about experimentation all the time on this channel because I genuinely think it's the best way to grow as an artist. When I started shooting in 35mm, my style, or at least the kind of images I'm looking to make, completely changed. Some of you might prefer my old work on 50mm and some might prefer 35 but ultimately I want to photograph what interests me and if anyone else likes it too then that's a bonus. That's definitely the approach I recommend taking yourself. Just photograph what interests you and then choose the best tool to help you do that, in this case the focal length you want to experiment with. So yeah, if you want an all-round lens which was the favourite of some of the masters of street photography then you can't really go wrong with a 35mm lens. 
You can get closer to the action and make layered images. And you can also step a bit further back to capture more of the environment and context. But if you find 35 mil a little too wide and 50 mil a little bit too close, then that's where the next focal length comes in. So to be honest, the 40mm lens is not one I've ever used. I went from 50 to 35 and that worked for me, but I've heard that 40mm focal length works really well for street photography, as it's sort of the best of both worlds between 35 and 50. You can often pick up these lenses cheaply and in a pancake format, meaning they have a really small form factor, perfect for being unnoticed on the street. Because I've not actually used one myself, I'm going to keep this section short, but if any of you watching have used a 40mm lens for street photography, then pop your experience using this focal length down in the comments below. When I first started out with street photography, sometimes I wanted to be a bit further away from my subjects to build my confidence, especially at night, and also to create a bit more abstract work. So that's what we'll focus on next. Some people will tell you that you can only use a 35mm or 28mm lens to make the best street photographs, but that's just total rubbish. Using a focal length of around 75mm or longer can make for some amazing photos on the street, but the approach just will be a little bit different. Using a longer lens like this will mean there's a lot of compression, and you'll also be standing a little bit further away from your subjects, so it's great for capturing candid portraits of people. But also, you could use it to incorporate the environment more for more sort of abstract photos. Also, if you prefer a more fine art approach to street photography and you enjoy capturing textures and details on the street, then this might be the lens you want to have in your kit as well. Now we've explored using a longer lens with a narrow field of view, let's talk about a wide angle lens. The 28mm lens is a classic for street photography, probably most notably used by one of the all-time street photography greats and inspiration to so many, Gary Winogrand. I've never used a 28mm lens in my street photography journey so far because I started off being more into abstract and minimal images, and I've always sort of struggled to fill the frame, so to be honest I was a bit scared of going wider. But once I picked up my 35mm lens I've absolutely loved that focal length, and it's how I've started to see since I've been following my own advice and using one camera, one lens for over the past sort of 8 months or so. But recently I've become more and more interested in the possibilities of the 28mm focal length, and I'd love to know your experience of using one if that's a focal length that you've got experience with. So why would you want to use a 28mm lens? Well it's a wide field of view so if you want to include a lot in your frame, fill it up with subjects with a more sort of documentary approach then this could be the right lens for you. For a more layered approach where you fill the frame though it means you need to get a lot closer to your subjects to make it work or else they kind of look too small in the photo. If you want to get right into the action yourself and give a real immersive view in your work then consider a 28mm. That way of doing street photography is a lot more suited to really busy built-up areas in my opinion like the centre of a big city. Having said that, you can definitely still use a 28mm lens in a more minimal way, showing more of the environment, perhaps using small figures and silhouettes to show the expanse of the environment in that more sort of fine art approach. I feel like the rule of thumb is if you find yourself constantly cropping on most of your photos, you're either standing too far away and would benefit from getting a bit closer to your subjects, or the style of photography you want to do would benefit from a tighter lens. As we've talked about in this video, the lens choices you make will have a big impact on the kind of street photography you want to do. If you want to document life and get close in on the action, you might want a 28 or 35mm lens. If you want an all-round lens with a bit of compression, maybe a 40 or 50mm lens would be best for you. And if you want to capture more abstract details standing from further away, perhaps a longer lens would suit your style. Regardless of what lens or lenses work best for you, I definitely think getting used to photographing in one focal length for a solid period of time will give you the best chance of improving how you make photographs. If you're constantly changing up lenses, it's hard to get into the flow of things. At least try to only take one lens with you when you go out on a photo walk. As for cheap entry level lenses or expensive pro lenses for street photography, it really doesn't matter. The quality of your lens is unlikely to affect the outcome of your photos, though it's definitely worth thinking about the other benefits of a more expensive lens, such as build quality, size, and potential weather sealing. This is just my approach though, so you don't have to just have one lens. You can pick and choose whatever works best for you. If you're traveling, one focal length might be better suited to the environment that you find yourself in, um, and then you might want to have another focal length for a different environment. So which focal length is right for you? Well, it really comes down to the kind of work you want to make, but the most important thing is just to get out there and take photographs to find out what you like in the long run. So check out this video next, which will give you four simple philosophies that you can follow to help you improve your work and get out there and practice. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.